You've been privy to some of these great performances, and I'll get to that. But I first want to ask about love. And with him out, and that you've got a day and you've got travel, I, there's, if he's in protocol, and, and maybe this is semantics, but there'd be really no reasonable way for him to be cleared on Sunday. So, I mean, I guess this is a situation where the diagnosis, is, is it vague for right now, Rachel? Yeah, I mean, those semantics could make all the difference, so they're very important. He went back to the locker room for evaluation. They ruled him out of the rest of the game without saying he had a concussion, just saying they were still evaluating okay. him. We saw him lead the locker room. This is a huge distinction because once you are in the concussion protocol, once you are ruled to have had a concussion, there's four steps you have to pass, and there's three steps within one of the steps. Basically, you got to pass a test at rest. you got to pass a test on a stationary bike. you got to pass a test running. you got to pass a test doing non-contact drills. As you note, Scott, there just isn't really time between now and game seven for him to do all of that if he really does have a concussion and needs to recover. So I don't know what status he's in right now. They have not told us okay. yet, but it is important, I think, for them to not say it until they really mean it because it will mean a whole nother thing for them. Very interesting. Whether it's your own observation or something anecdotally, something someone said about what James did, yet another 40-point game. What do you got for me? How do you frame what you saw? Well, it's pretty incredible. I got to cover Michael Jordan a little bit in Chicago, a lot in Washington, D.C. I've gotten to cover LeBron James since his senior year in high school. And the biggest thing that I always say when I see one of these nights is, wow, if you don't like watching this, you don't like basketball. You should turn off the TV right. and get another sport. Because the thing to remember is once these are gone, they are gone. And the gap between Michael and LeBron was long enough for all of us to say, when is the next one coming? Even maybe if you're a Boston Celtics fan, you get a pass on enjoying tonight. But everybody else, I, I just am sort of marveling at this guy's ability to keep doing this night after night when his team needs him. And of course, the question now, Scott, is can he do this again in game seven? Because he was tired the other night in Boston. You and I talked about it after the game. He talked about it in between. He poured in this effort tonight. He looked like a zombie on a couple plays. Ty Lue had to call timeouts just to get him some rest. The question is, can he turn this around and do this all all over again on Sunday night. Ty Lue was asked in the press conference if he can do it, if the other guys on the team can do it because Kevin is out. They played such a short rotation tonight. Ty, of course, said what he always says, which is, come on, it's game seven. Everyone's going to get up for this. I could probably play a few minutes in a game seven. They might need him. Yeah, that, 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 that rotation is, uh, is, is short, but they did get something out of that bench, and, and if they're going to win, they have to get something out of the guys they got something out of tonight, and, uh, you know, you got, you got 48 minutes to prove it one way or another. I thought it was interesting that he stuck with Larry Nance Jr. at the end. Larry Nance could not get into the playoff rotation at one point this postseason. I had a bunch of conversations with him. And the thing I say to every young player is make them not be able to take you out. Larry Nance Jr. did that tonight. That was impressive. We're going to see if that carries over to Boston as well.